Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to New Products at ASTAP, um, brought to you by Melody Brooks of the Arizona Technology Access Program. My name is John McDermott, and I work for the Institute for Human Development in Flagstaff, Arizona. We're happy to collaborate with ASTAP to deliver the webinar via the Adobe Connect web conferencing platform. So I have a few general housekeeping tidbits. This is a listen-only webinar. Um, please utilize the chat pod for questions or comments and we will be recording this webinar uh, and archiving it on our YouTube channel. Um, so um, I'm gonna hand it over to Melody. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, I am an assistive technology specialist here at ASTAP. So um, I'm just going to be pulling up the PowerPoint I'm going to go through today. Okay. Great. Okay, so um, I developed this webinar so because people always ask me, what's new at ASTAP? What's new at ASTAP? So I decided to create a webinar letting people know uh, what products we new products we have in our inventory now these products are not necessarily brand new on the market they're just new to our inventory so we'll uh, go through here and let you find out what we got so um, I'm looking at the uh, participants and some of you know our program very well and some of you don't so I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to explain our uh, program for those who are not so familiar. We are a federally funded program through NAU. We're in um, downtown Phoenix and we provide free assistive technology services to everyone in the state, all ages, all disabilities. We don't sell anything. Our job is to educate people and let them know what's out there uh, as far as devices and services to help them out. If you, uh, okay, so we'll go to the next slide. So this is our mission statement. I usually don't read the slides, but I'm gonna read this one. To connect people with disabilities with the assistive technology or AT, they need to participate as fully as possible in activities that matter to them. So um, if you wanna find out more about our program, you can um, go to aztap.org aztap.org and all of our um, services and inventory are online there or at least the services are explained and so on okay so um, lately it's just a coincidence that we have uh, obtained a lot of devices for people with vision impairments so uh, there will be a few of those on here today First thing we have is a Visio book, and it's about $3,000. You can get it at a couple of different places. Basically, what this is, it's a um, magnifier, it's a desktop magnifier. It's a little bit more portable than the typical ones. And uh, it is, um, we're going to watch a little video about it, but basically it's seven pounds. So I don't know how portable that is for everybody. But it is more, you know, weighs less than some of the other desktop magnifiers. Let's see. So for Visio, okay, we'll just look at the video first. Maybe. Visio book. Portable electronic magnifier and distance viewer. Visio Book, the most portable, compact desktop video magnifier available. Until now, desktop magnifiers were large and heavy, but the revolutionary Visio Book folds to just slightly bigger than a laptop computer and weighs only seven pounds. Carry in a backpack or laptop case and use for over five hours on a single charge. Visio Book lets you magnify print, pictures, or objects, see print or people at a distance, and even use the screen as a mirror. 
magnify. Read text, see pictures, thread a needle, use recipes, work with small objects, and more with VizioBook. VizioBook has a high-definition 12.5-inch widescreen monitor and a well-lit work surface. VizioBook is simple to use. It has only six buttons and a zoom dial. Magnify up to 30 times and set the image to the style that suits you best. Image colors are reversible and you have 10 choices of colors for text. Press the picture button to return the screen to natural colors. Distance viewing. Simply rotate the sturdy camera toward objects in the distance. See presenters, text on a whiteboard, PowerPoints, demonstrations, and more. Use the dial to zoom in or out. The compact base of VizioBook measures just 12 by 13 inches. Use on a desk, conference table, kitchen counter, or other tight space. When finished, fold the Visio book for storage. It's only two inches thick. Okay, so that is some information about the Visio book. Um, locally, here in Arizona, you can get it um, a couple different places. There's, I guess, two two models, and I'm not. I have I've asked some questions, and I'm not sure what the difference is. I'm sure the basic functionality is the same. But if you're a student, and um, you can go to the Foundation for Blind Children to obtain one. Or if you're a student at ASDB, that's the Arizona State, I mean, sorry, Arizona School for the Deaf and Blind, um, you can get it there. If uh, you're not a student, then uh, locally Digital Apex sells this product. And you can go to My Digital Apex to, uh, to find out more about the product and the um, seller for that. Um, I was going to say earlier that the way we obtain or the, the way we choose our products for our inventory that we provide our services with is by um, people requesting items that we don't have. And that's exactly how we got the Visio book because we had about three requests when, within a month for the Visio book. So we went ahead and, and bought it. So if we can't buy right away, we put it on a list, and then we eventually, you know, uh, get things on our list as we go down. But that's how we decide what products we have in our inventory. If you uh, have a product um, and we don't have it, you'd like to take a look at it, let us know, and we will try to get it if we can. So we will go on. Another new product we have is the Blaze EZ. Also, by the way, if there's anybody out there that have used these products and you'd like to comment on them, feel free to put it in the chat area and um, share it with folks. And if I uh, see it here, I will uh, uh, comment on it as well. The Blaze EZ, it's $695. And you can get this product at Hens Incorporated or a locally at Digital Apex. Good day, my name is Chris Chamberlain of Frontier Computing, and I'm here today to present an exciting new product that we're carrying from Hims International of South Korea. This device is called the Blaze EZ, or EZ, since we're in Canada. Although we're not in Canada, but you guys probably know that. And the Blaze EZ is a full functioning, all encompassing entertainment, book reader, recorder, and radio for those who are vision impaired or blind. All the buttons on this device are entirely tactile. It fits nicely in your hand and is entirely portable with the 17 hour battery life. As you can see, the buttons on the front are entirely tactile, so that the M stands for Media Center, the R is in the middle for Radio, and on the right-hand side is the Digital Book Player. The buttons below control functionality, select menu items, 
and a number of other functions within those. This device is, as I said before, absolutely fabulous in terms of all that it can do. And I'm going to demonstrate the most exciting part of it, in my opinion, which is the handheld scanning capabilities of the Blaze EZ. So it's analyzing the image right now, and we're going to hear what it says to us. Fabulous. This is just the greatest little device that I've seen in a long, long time. Okay. Um, so um, that's some information about the Blaze EZ. Um, just looking over my notes real quick. Okay. We don't have any questions, so I'll just go on. Here's another product, a new product we have for folks with vision impairments. This is called the eBot. There's actually three different versions of this, so I'll just play the video and then I'll let you guys know what the differences are in the different models. The eBot, this, the one that we have is the eBot Advance, and it's um, $3,289. But it's, it's actually the only magnifier of its kind that um, that actually allows you you to see the magnification on a computer or a um, iPad Android device wirelessly. Hi, I'd like to introduce to you the latest and near the disc portable computer gaming technology. This is a is the first near and distance camera that is compatible with an iPad. It can also work with an Android tablet or phone, a PC, a Mac, or even just a computer. You can control the eBot with controls that are actually on the camera, a remote control, or by using gestures on your device. To look at something at a distance, the image is very, very clear. We have a voice guide happening right, or speaking right now, which is something you can elect to keep on or turn off. But it's a nice little addition to the unit. There are three different variations of this eBot camera. Depending on which one that you would perhaps um, require, there are different features available. You can uh, capture images and text. Near and distance viewing, you can also have access to OCR, full page OCR. Um, there is also an option for a robotic camera that you can control with a joystick. Um, it's an exceptional device. Um, we're very happy to be carrying this at Frontier Community Center. All right, so that gives you a little idea about the eBot. Um, now, I said that there's three different versions, and the lady just sort of uh, mentioned that as well. There's the uh, eBot Pro, and with that, there's two cameras, um, one for magnification and one for full page, what's called OCR, or Optical Character Recognition. That's the technology that allows a picture to be taken of text and then it read back to somebody. Um, with the Pro, the camera is motorized, um, and you can, um, so you can change the, the um, camera um, through the I, iPad and, and what have you. Let's see, uh, there's the advanced that we have. With that, it's not motorized, and it does what's called image OCR. Um, Whereas the Pro does a full page OCR, which means it takes a picture of the full page and it reads it to you. With the image OCR, 
it just will read back to you what is magnified or what it sees. It doesn't do the whole page, just part of the page. And then there's a regular eBot, which has no ECR, OCR, sorry, and the um, camera is not motorized. So that's sort of the difference between the three. You can uh, purchase it at HIMS. Um, the um, website for HIMS is HIMS-INC.com or locally through Digital Apex. Okay, we have, um, now we're going to talk about products that we have that are for hearing impairments. I'm going to talk about the Silent Call Signature Series. Um, now, th these are not particularly new products, but they're new to us. We got the Signature Series, um, the main unit, which is in the middle. It's called the Sidekick 2, about six months ago. And then what happens is the Signature Series is the alerting device, one of them, for folks with a hearing impairment. And then you just buy extra components to it. And that's why I have on the um, slide here, $254 plus. The Sidekick um, is $254. So depending on what other products you want to use with it, it will of course go higher and higher in price. We have a, a pretty big selection of components for this. So, um, we have, for instance, the doorbell. So whenever somebody is at the door and, and they push that doorbell, the, the sidekick is going to, it has a strobe light to alert you that something's going on. And then it has different, different buttons on the bottom. And the buttons will light up depending on what is being activated to let you know. Um, also, there's an LED screen that also will tell you the doorbell, you know, is somebody's at the door. So we have, um, let me look here, which components we have. We have um, the watch kit, which I also have a picture up of on the slide. And uh, so it is a vibrating watch that will alert you to different things as well. Um, different alarms going off. Um, we have the bed shaker unit, so there's a built-in alarm to the product, and uh, the bed shaker will shake, and, and uh, the idea is that it will wake you up whenever there's a smoke detector or somebody's at the door or there's a phone call, it will let you know that way. We also have what I think is pretty cool, um, and there's a picture of it on the slide here, is something called the Trans Matter. And what that is, is it's basically to let you know that somebody's standing at your door. And uh, you can put it under a rug or under your, I forgot what you call it now, but your doormat. <laughs> put it under your doormat and it will alert you when somebody's standing on it. Or, um, yeah. So um, that's a great little product as well. We also have, um, which can be related to this, I believe, we have a cell phone flasher. So you put your cell phone on this little device. I don't have a picture of it up right now, but um, whenever it vibrates, it also flashes strobe back, a strobe light will flash on that little device. Uh, the doormat, I have a question here. The doormat device, is that hardwired? Looks like it from the picture. Yes, it is. Um, yes. Now, recently, we've been asked by somebody um, to buy an additional product for this kit, and and we put it on our to-do list, and, and we're, we're going to get it pretty soon. And that is not the trans matter because this is a business, and people are walking in and out of the door all the time. So of course, you don't want the trans matter to get um, broken down real fast. So it is a, a door access slash window access um, monitor. 
So when somebody opens the door or whenever somebody opens a window, it will alert the person as well. Um, so you can uh, get this system at uh, silentcall.com or Harris Communication um, has it too. And, and that website is harriscom, C O M M dot com. And you can take a look at different components. Now, of course, the Sidekick only works with the signature series transmitters. So you have to have something that is on the same weight, you know, a radio frequency or what have you, uh, with the, the signature series component. Okay, looks like we, uh, in the chat area is the harriscom.com URL if you want to take a look at that. Okay. Okay, all right, um, I'll go on here. Now, caption telephones have been around for a while. Um, this product is new for us. This is uh, for folks with hearing impairments. This happens to be a picture of the CapTel 2400i. I have on here that it's demonstration only. We do have caption telephones that uh, we do loan out to people. But this particular model is, is pretty cool looking. Uh, it's got some cool features, but it's on long-term loan to us, so we can't loan it out to somebody else. But people can come in here, get a demonstration, and try it out here at our office. The uh, video that I'm going to show is just caption, explains caption phones in general. But then I'll um, give you some specifics about this particular phone. So. Stay tuned. Telephone is still our link to the world, to businesses, to services, to family and friends. Imagine enjoying telephone conversations without guessing what was said, missing words, or asking people to repeat themselves. Today, we'll show you a new technology from Ultratech that makes phone calls possible, reliable, and even enjoyable for people with hearing loss. It's called Caption Telephone. We're all familiar with Caption Television. Today, every new TV set sold in this country is able to display captions. Ready to go. Long Appetito. Why not apply the Caption Television principle to telephone calls? Provide a telephone call with sound and captions. You hear the other person's voice, so you benefit from the hearing ability you have. Hi, John. I'm glad you called. I have a couple of things I want to discuss with you. You also get captions throughout the conversation to make sure you understand every word completely and accurately. Okay, um, so that's a little bit about cap telephones in general. Um, this particular model um, has a large, easy to use um, screen, so it's a touch screen. The amplification is up to 40 decibels, and it has a traditional uh, telephone keypad, so a lot of folks like that. They don't like having to dial on a touch screen especially some, maybe some of the older folks with hearing impairments. So um, some people really like that keypad. Okay, so Vicki, um, I see your note down there. I'm going to read it in just a moment, but is this for the CapTel? Because um, I'm not going to be able to link and present. Uh, Vicki, um, for those of you that might not be able to see the chat, says this is an important link to a conversation example. It's so very important that users understand the inherent delay and can deal with it. My two cents. So um, yes, there is somewhat of a, a little bit of a delay in a caption telephone. Not as much as there used to be if you're used to the older telephones like the voice carryover phones of a long time ago. Um, but yeah, there is still a delay. 
Also, I had meant to um, give people information about the phone program that Vicki Thompson um, manages. So Vicki, would you put a phone number or a website up on the chat and then I'll say it out loud for folks um, where they can get more information. If you have a hearing impairment and you're a resident of Arizona, then um, you can apply to get um, either a caption telephone, not this particular model, but a caption telephone or an amplified phone and an alerting device. So Vicki has uh, put down her email, V Thompson, T H O M P S O N, at A C D H H dot A Z dot gov. Um, toll free, 866 223 3412. And a direct number is 602 542 um, I'm basically reading this because I, I think there's some folks out there that might have vision impairments. So um, if you need to get that information again, you can always contact me. Thanks, Vicki. Now, the requirements for this particular model are, um, a, of course, a telephone service, high speed internet, electrical, and, uh, of course, electrical power. Um, there are some cap telephones that don't require a high speed internet, just to let you know. Okay, now there's no more questions about that. We'll go on. Okay, so now we're going to move into assistive technology for activities of daily living. The, um, this is a really odd device, although I'm not an OT and I, I don't, occupational therapist, I don't um, help people with their compression socks or their TED hose, but I've been told by some OTs that this is a really nifty product. So I'm just going to let the video speak for itself. This is called a Doff and Donner. It's $60. Hi, I'm Judith, the Education Manager of Sigveris. Today I'm going to introduce you to our most popular accessory, the Sigveris Doff and Donner. This revolutionary device will help you put on and take off your compression stockings in no time. It's also great for a family member or caretaker to assist. Okay, let's get started. During this demonstration, I'll be calling this the sleeve and this the cone. First, secure the cone to a flat table simply by pushing the handle until it holds firmly. Once the cone is secure, slip your compression stocking over the cone. Then, drop the sleeve to the base of the cone. Grab the top band of the stocking and pull it out and up onto the sleeve. Stop when the top band reaches the top of the sleeve and then simply roll the sleeve with the stocking off the top of the cone. Notice how it folds onto itself and remember where the heel is. Gently roll the sleeve to flatten the toe seam and remember the position of your heel. Now simply place the sleeve with the heel down, toe to toe, and roll it up your leg. Let the sleeve do the work. For a comfortable fit, smooth out any wrinkles and position the top band two fingers width from the right angle bend of your knee. For an open toe. Okay, so that's the basics of the Dauphin Donner. It's a, it's a really odd feeling device. Um, when you have it in your hand, it's sort of like gel, some kind of water or liquid inside this rubber um, container. So it's a... It's a different looking kind of device, but it, it seems to work for some folks. Let's see. Um, can we get it here in Arizona? Um, you just go, no, uh, DolphinDonner.com is the only place I know of where you can get this. Um, if anybody, you know, finds this locally, please let me know. But that's where we got it, was through DolphinDonner.com. D-O-F-F, -F, the word and, Donner, D-O-N-N-E-R. Okay, another product we have that's um, somewhat new in our 
Thanks. Um, thanks, John. He just put it up in the chat area. Um, is the again in um, still in activities for daily living is the liftware spoon. It's three hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and actually, it's a device. I want to play a video in a moment, but it's a device that helps people with trimmers eat. So if you have essential trimmers, Parkinson, something like this, it's sometimes hard for you to independently eat. So take a look at the video here. Yeah, I, I find when I, I eat that I, I've gotten used to bending over the bowl itself. It is too difficult. I had a nice last one. It wasn't nice at the end of the evening, so I, I tend to have a lot of same clothes. <laughs> I think of uh, years to come and um, what that's going to be like. I believe that this tremor will hold me all the time, and, and I want something to make my life bearable. It locks in place. It's not going to fall off. It's secure like food is. It has a nice feel to it. You can see my trimmer. See how it feels. And it turns itself off. And if I turn it Okay, we uh, think this is a pretty neat device. Um, now, a little bit about Liftware. You, they have a different kind of website. Um, you go to google.com slash Liftware, and you can find out about more about this product. But um, from what I understand, um, the handle has stabilizing sensors that detect the hand motion. So I guess it has a little computer chip in there, and there's a couple of motors, and it just has the ability to move in the opposite direction of the trimmer. So I'm not a really uh, mechanically inclined techie person, but um, that's more or less it. And it, uh, this one ha showed the uh, spoon, and that's the attachment we have is for the spoon, but they also have a fork and soup spoon model as well. It has a rechargeable battery and it will last they say it will last for several days on a single charge. So that is a little bit about liftware. Oops. Hey. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh there it goes. Okay, now something else that we have that's relatively new is um, in activities for daily living. It's something to something else to help you eat. Um, this is called a mealtime partner dining system. It's eight thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars. Uh, so it is quite expensive, but but I'll, of course I'll show you the video. But basically, um, if you have quadriplegia, you can't um, feed yourself with a, uh, a utensil um, then you can use a device like this and it's much easier for you to be more independent um, in, in eating and by the way I think this gentleman is going it works by using switches this can be set up for a one switch or a two switch um, the two what a two switch will do is it moves the bowls 
The one switch will move a bowl. The other switch will scoop the food into um, the spoon. And Michelle has asked if any of these products are covered by insurance. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, typically, if you can get something justified under durable medical equipment, yes. Of course, eating is very important. Um, but, I mean, I'm talking about all the products in general. If, if you can get it justified, then you might be able to get insurance to pay for it. Um, I just, there are some little benefits and in insurances that do pay for devices and they don't have to be durable medical equipment. It just, I think, depends on your particular policy. So we'll go ahead and play the video here. And for those of you that may be visually impaired, it's um, showing a gentleman who's activating the device. He's uh, put some, used a switch for the spoon to get some food. And then he's used another switch to change the bowl so he gets another kind of food. There's three bowls in, um, in this particular device. <coughs> so you can have three different things to eat. And the spoon comes out further than the bowl, so then he can put his mouth over the spoon. Oh, so that's a little quick video, but I think it showed um, its capability really well. And, uh, you would get that at mealtimepartners.com. On your uh, question about the insurance, you can also, especially these higher priced items, you could um, contact the sellers and of course they're gonna try to help you find funding for it. It's in their best interest to sell their, their uh, product. Michelle is asking about programs that offer scholarships or possibly agencies a client could get these products. Yes, um, there might be programs out there available for folks. It just depends on, on that person's situation. So Michelle, if you have somebody that you're thinking about, you can contact me you know, sometime after the webinar and I could talk to you more one-on-one -on -one about somebody's situation. Some of the lower cost items typically are not um, funded by insurance though. Okay, now we're gonna move on to computer access. This is a really cool product, I think. Um, it's called a Tetra Mouse. There's different models of this. Um, and so I have TMXA, TMXA, and that's the model we have. The basic unit is $349, but you can, um, um, you know, if you have to get a mount or something else, then it's going to be more money. So, show you the video here. It's really well explained in the in the video. I think you can really see a consumer using it. This is Diego. Hi, Diego. And Diego is using an item called a Tetra mouse. It's a very light touch joystick. And he's using two little eye drop caps. There's different end caps available for it. And just by moving his lips and chin around just a bit, he's able to completely control the cursor over on his nice big old MacBook here. And he's got it positioned with my articulating arm, which is connected to his wheelchair right there. And he uses it with an on-screen keyboard for typing. And he moves around with the right joystick there and with the left one he does clicking and control clicking and uh, he's able to be very functional we had started okay so that's a quick video but basically one side is for moving the mouse the other side is for clicking and uh for those of you that are in the field of assistive technology a lot that was rj cooper 
Um, but uh, so, and you might have also noticed that visually these two devices look different. The one that I have on the screen and the one that RJ was demonstrating with Diego. Um, I think this picture is of the newer model. Um, it's more round. The older model is more square. And, oh, and you can get that at tetramouse.com, T-E-T-R-A mouse.com. Now, we've also acquired a lot of Bluetooth keyboards. It seems that's all the rage now, Bluetooth. And I admit it's pretty cool. Um, so I've just got a couple of examples up here of the keyboards we have. Um, we have the Chester Creek Big Blue keyboard. It's a hundred dollars. It's uh, if you're familiar with the big keys keyboards, it's basically that same size. The keys are bigger. Um, it's a white key with black lettering, and the uh, the lettering is nice and bold. And then of course it is Bluetooth, so you don't have to be connected to the computer to use it. The other example I have up here is the Adesso 3.0 Mini Bluetooth Keyboard 2000. Um, it's $50. So we have a lot of small and even condensed keyboards. That is very popular for folks who uh, need one-handed typing. Instead of learning a different layout, a lot of them just get a very small keyboard and there's a program out there that teaches you how to type one-handed called, uh, I think, One-Handed Typing Tutor. <laughs> um, so that's just um, an alternative for one-handed typing. Here's a few more things for computer access. We have the Air O2 Bic mouse. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but it's A I R 0 2 B I C mouse. It's $135. There's a picture of it in there. It's, it's a little hard to explain, but um, it's very different looking. And basically, you you put it on your hand instead of your hand being on the top of the mouse flat against the surface, your hand is actually vertical. It's up and down. And there's a little support area that comes up over the hand or uh, the wrist as well. So it's um, an ergonomic type of mouse. And we also have a picture here of an ergonomic five button wired vertical mouse. So it's another vertical mouse. It just has um, the button's in a different area, it's $50. We have a lot of ergonomic products as, <coughs> sorry, as well. The third thing I have, picture I have up here is of Human Scale, which is the name of the company, a Human Scale Switch Mouse for $99. And uh, it's sort of hard to tell what it does by um, the picture, but um, it is right now a picture of it tilted to one side. When I heard switch mouse, I thought that this is something that you could use switches with. It. You know, it was like a switch adapted mouse. You could use it as a switch interface. But that's not it at all. Basically, the, the switch has to do with the tilt of the mouse. So you can have it tilt to the right or you can have it tilt to the left. Uh, another nice feature of this mouse that I am not able to show graphically is that you can actually pull the mouse out and make it longer if you, if you need it. Because um, their website site says, you know, um, one mouse does not fit all or something like that. So you can adjust the length of this mouse, mouse as well. That's another feature of it. Okay. I have sort of a, a crossover category here called Other AT um, because these devices can be used for lots of different 
you know, in lots of different areas. They can be used for communication. They can be used for computer access, and on and on. So uh, this is a product called MyGaze. So it is a Oh, well, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I've lost my words, but it is a eye gaze system. I'm so used to saying eye gaze versus my gaze. I think that's what messed me up. Anyways, um, I'll just, um, show you the video here. It's $1,695, by the way. It is, I, be I believe, still the least expensive eye gaze product out there. Introducing MyGaze with iMes Play, the new standard for easy and affordable eye gaze control for the classroom. MyGaze with iMes Play allows you to use your gaze to control the mouse cursor on screen and explore, play games, learn and communicate on your PC, desktop, laptop or tablet. Suitable for those new to eye gaze and for use with all levels of ability. MyGaze with iMouse Play includes the MyGaze Eye Tracker, a portable and easy to use eye tracking device that works with any assistive and mouse driven software, including Help Kids Learn, Choose It Maker 3, and inclusive eye gaze, attention and looking. The new iMouse Play also includes easy access to your grid based software. or simply play many of your favourite games and activities that are normally accessed with a mouse. To operate, simply mount and plug in the eye tracker into the USB port of your desktop PC or laptop, install the required software and open iMouse Play, the world's first easy eye gaze interface. A simple three-step setup process means you'll be eye gazing in seconds with no training required just position calibrate and go okay sounds good uh, my gaze is advertised more for children but anybody any age can can use this product and if you go to mygaze.com you can find out more information Um, I haven't looked recently at the list of attendees. Let me just look real close, real quick here. Okay. Um, the next product I have is an OfficeMate switch adapted Bluetooth headset. Now the OfficeMate has really been around for a long time, but this is, we have the new model and the people that have tried the older model uh, and it didn't work too well for them, have loved this newer model. There was a gentleman who actually uses this, uh, had signed up for the webinar, and I would hope that, I was hoping he might make a comment, but he um, wasn't able to join us this afternoon about it. And this is another product, again, where people were requesting it, so we went ahead and obtained it for our demonstration and loan library. Um, it is $499, and I'm just looking quickly for my notes on it. So um, with this product, you're able to switch between a cell phone and a computer with a single headset. And you also um, have the ability to then answer, place, and end phone calls with any switch. You can also use switch, um, I'm sorry, speech recognition software with this. So in the past, if somebody wanted a switch adapted product for their, their cell phone, and then they were also using speech recognition, they used to have to change headsets. But now they don't. It's all in, <coughs> in one. There's uh, eight hours of talk time on it on a, on a charge and 180 hours of standby time. So you can um, get this product either at enablemart.com or, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, I think it's sage, but I'm not sure, um, sage-tech.com.
S-A-J-E hyphen T-E-C-H dot com is how you can um, get that product. Okay, so um, again, the reason why I'm telling people about our new products out there is because for those of you that don't know, we do have a demonstration and equipment loan library. And uh, we want to get the word out about our new products so people, you know, will start borrowing them. Our equipment loans, most of our items we can, we can loan out. There's a few, as I mentioned before, that are not ours that we can't loan. But most of our almost 2,300 products we will loan out for two weeks. And I have our URL on here, but I'm actually going to go there live in a moment because we have a few more minutes and show you, if you're not uh, familiar, how to um, request items online and see where our inventory is. Um, and we provide services throughout the state of Arizona. So, and you don't have to come into our office to borrow something. You can request it online. It will ship it to you. We'll give you a return label to ship it back to us. And um, you, all you have to do is sign a fairly simple loan agreement it's a, a document that's got about seven sentences on it, basically saying you'll take care of it, you'll bring it back on time, you'll try not to, to fix it if it breaks, and of course accepting liability for it. So um, the um, URL is azatdemoloanprogram.org, or you can get it to it off our website, which I'm going to go ahead and go to right now. Well, maybe. <laughs> this is the only one I didn't load, the only website I didn't load up beforehand. All right, so if you go to our website, let me try to make it bigger. See if that works? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to go to AT Devices, AT Loan Libraries. Um, there's actually two loan libraries. There's uh, one for the Department of Education, and then here's ours, ASTAP Lending Library. This is where you can go and search our inventory. And we'll just, I'll just put in something really quick here. Dynavox. And you can search and see. If you know the name of the product, what products we have, you can click on it. And then once you've clicked on a device, you can add it to your cart and then do uh, check out. Um, and then either Clayton, my counterpart, or myself will uh, get back to you and finalize the, agree the loan agreement. And then you'll be uh, um, trying it out. Now, we try to update our inventory as much as possible with our new devices, but unfortunately we've just gone through a, a database, a database slash inventory change, and we haven't been able to, in the last couple of months, we have not been able to update our inventory in this section. So we put um, our new products somewhere else, so you might want to take a look. If you go to, back to AT devices, and then down to AT device and apps spotlight. Here there is a toggle, new devices and ASTAP and the ASTAP loan library. And here you can click on a, a PDF will come up and it will, um, it says here, view our list of equipment available for demonstration and loan. Click on that and we'll have an updated list of products in our inventory. Hopefully, um, we're going to get this resolved pretty soon. But for now, if you you know you want to see you want to borrow a Visio book, but it wasn't in the inventory, then um, you can contact us, and we'll still set you up to be able to borrow that device. Okay. So unless there's any more questions, that's what I um, have for you today. 
or if you think of a device you would like us to buy that maybe we don't have, you can list them in the chat or you can get back to me later. And so I'll stick around for a few minutes to see if anybody has any more comments. Thank you all for participating today. You're welcome. Thanks, Joyce. You're welcome, everybody. Try not to get wet for those of you that live here in the valley. And so then um, to exit, all you have to do is um, close your browser to exit the webinar. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see. I'm going to hit a button here, see what happens. Can you hear me, Melody? Yeah. Yes. Um, was uh, where was that little icon that you were talking about in in um, that little in the widget? Yes, and um, she took a picture of it. that you just did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, it might be in the. Afraid. Yeah, I was just afraid to click on it because I didn't want anything to go kapuli. Yeah, if it's in the widget, it might be. Uh, something telling you that there are comments oh. um, and maybe it doesn't refresh is the number eight still there no i think um i don't know if it's still it looked like a little box as i got closer to it it looked like a little box so maybe that okay. was just what it was yeah um and uh the reason why i didn't see it is probably because you're the one sharing the screen mm -hmm. so that little widget shows up to tell you that um people are chiming in or something like that yeah Okay. Now we know. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. See you next time. Yeah, have a good weekend. See you too.